here in Morgantown for the Big 12 opener. 2-1 K-State coming into town to take on the 12th ranked West Virginia Mountaineers. They haven't played in two weeks. They are lathered up and ready to go. Welcome to college football on ESPN. Presented by PlayStation 4. Clay Matvick and Dan Orlovsky, Paul Carcatero will be down on the sidelines here today. It's always fun to come to Morgantown. We're going to see one of the best quarterbacks in the country today. And Will Greer's ability to have anticipation and accuracy is good as anybody in the country. He is a fifth-year senior, 23 years old. He has a wife and daughter. In 2015, he led Florida to a 6-0 start before testing positive for a banned substance. Resurfaced here after a one-year suspension. Great numbers last year despite a broken finger late, and he's a Heisman candidate this year. He's got a bunch of weapons to get the ball to, and if West Virginia keeps winning, he'll be in that Heisman talk all season long. Preseason All-American, Heisman hopeful, has really looked the part through the first two games. West Virginia did not play last week because of Hurricane Florence, so the game with NC State was canceled. We've had plenty of time to prepare for K-State, who won the toss and elected to defer. So we're going to see Will Greer in the offense for West Virginia right away. Ball is in the air. We're underway here at Milan Pushkar Stadium. It's Marcus Sims on the return. Good coverage by the Wildcats. Sims only able to get to the 15-yard line. And here comes Will Greer. 6'2", 223-pound senior out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Nine touchdown passes, just one pick. 11 of his 13 games at West Virginia. He has gone over 300 yards. Every time he takes the field, Dano, something special could happen. Tell Petaway in the backfield with him on the first play from scrimmage. He'll roll out to his left, look at the throw on first down. He's going to take a shot. Ball hangs up, looking for David Sills, his main man, and it lands incomplete. Double coverage there. Ball a little sloppy out of the hand of Greer to start. That one didn't come out as clean as he would like. I do love the fact that they're taking a shot on first down down the field to start this game. But it will be something to pay attention to. Like you mentioned, the two weeks off. Do they come out fresh and fast, or does it just take time to get them in rhythm? And an impressive win over Tennessee in the opener. Blew out Youngstown State a couple of weeks ago. And it's been a while. Here's Gary Jennings making a catch. And that's going to make it third and manageable. Jennings, one of the great receivers that Will Greer has at his disposal. Nice job by West Virginia. Get to a little bit of a stacked receiver set. They love quick game out of it. Third down and three. They're going to pick up the first down. David Sills moves the chains down to the 34-yard line. Pickup of 12 yards for West Virginia. And that's something Sills is really taking the next step in. He's an outside receiver for sure, but they move him in the slot. Patience on the route. Good first down for West Virginia. Greer to throw again. Another deep shot. Looking for Sims. And that's intercepted. Picked off by A.J. Parker. The sophomore out of Oklahoma. And Will Greer throws his second interception of the year. Kansas State will take over. All right, Steve, thank you very much. Welcome to Morgantown, the Big 12 opener for 2-1 Kansas State. And number 12, West Virginia. The first game in two weeks for the Mountaineers. They had their last game against NC State canceled because of Hurricane Florence. So a lot of time to get ready for this one for Will Greer and company, but he just threw an interception, and K-State takes over. From their own six-yard line, it's Alex Barnes on the run, and it's a good one on first down. We were curious, Dan Orlovsky, how Will Greer 
and West Virginia would look today after so much time off. And they didn't look good on that opening drive. Some good plays. The, the interception is looks like a miscommunication between Greer and his receiver. Beautiful play down the field by A.J. Parker for Kansas State. Skyler Thompson, a quarterback for the Wildcats, and he gives it to Alex Barnes. So here is the interception moments ago from A.J. Parker, the sophomore cornerback out of Bartlesville, Oklahoma. It's the second time on that opening series we saw Greer float a pass. Yeah. It looks like Greer's thinking you're going outside Sims, and Sims takes it to the post. So that's something on the sidelines. He's going to go back, talk to Sims about what did you see to make sure that mistake doesn't happen again. First possession for the Wildcats. First down and 10 from the 17-yard line. Thompson's going to run. And that's what K-State wants to do has established the run and especially the quarterback run such a staple of what K-State does it's Skylar Thompson running this offense sophomore out of Independence Missouri making his eighth straight start going back to last season he found some rhythm last week against UTSA played very well last week and certainly they want to run but Skylar Thompson can do both over 200 yards passing a couple of touchdowns also ran for a touchdown against the Roadrunners Here's Alex Barnes to the 23. He's going to bring up third down for K-State. Kenny Bigelow with the tackle up front. Let's take a look at the impact players. Yeah, I mean, for Kansas State and offense, Skylar Thompson has to have a great day of protecting the football and making throws down the field. Isaiah Zuber, his receiver, can make you fall down at DB. And then Kenny Bigelow is going to play on the center's head. Great penetration has totally transformed this West Virginia defense. And they're playing with a chip on their shoulder, according to Tony Gibson, the defensive coordinator. Let's see what they could do here on third down and four. They bring some pressure off the edge. The run right up the middle is stuffed. Fourth down for K-State, no gain. David Long, the weak side linebacker, number 11, made the stop. So they bring their bandit safety, Toyas. Avery off the edge means everybody in that defensive line slants right into where Kansas State is trying to run the football and West Virginia gets off the field after the turnover. First year punter Andrew Hicks comes on for K-State, a boomer. Lands at the two, checks up. Great kick by Andrew Hicks, the redshirt freshman out of Shawnee, Kansas. Bangs won 57 yards, a long field for the Mountaineers when we come back. You're a dad now. You're also a husband. How has that changed you as a quarterback? Well, I, I think there's a, a sort of maturity that uh, that comes along with, with uh, you know, being a dad and a husband. But, you know, I've, I've, I've played quarterback for a long time. Um, I, I love this game. I love the team aspect of things. And, uh, try to be a leader on and off the field, and uh, it's you know really a blessing to be able to go home to a, a healthy, happy family. Um, you know, and I try and incorporate positivity with with that to the rest of my teammates. A leader at home as well. Oh, yeah. Got to ask you though, from a scenario standpoint, a backside blitz or waking up in the middle of the night changing a diaper. What's tougher? Loop the diaper. <laughs> <laughs> thousand, ten times out of ten, change the diaper. That's just, just how it is. You'll know when you do it. <laughs> Good interview with Paul Carcaterra and Will Greer, the Heisman candidate at quarterback. Just completed a pass to Sims. He's got him again. And he gets loose inside the 20. Goodbye, touchdown. The first two series for the Mountaineers were dismal. But this is a quick strike offense, and Greer hits Sims for an 82-yard touchdown play.
Here's Evan Staley with the extra point. And it's 7-0 Mountaineers. Two plays, 35 seconds. And Greer hits Marcus Sims. It's his first touchdown catch of the year. And it's really the same play. Clay, they ran first down, just an easy completion, a little eight-yard stop to Sims. They come back, and it's a double move right off that initial first down play. Beautiful ball by Greer and Sims, way too fast. And we listened to the Paul Carcateri interview. You know, he's got a lot of layers. He's a family man, yeah. wife and daughter. He's shown a lot of maturity here in recent years. It's helped him on the field. It's helped the whole team. That maturity has spread throughout their whole football team. And it's a reason why West Virginia is going to be in this conversation moving forward. Evan Staley, the kickoff. And Isaiah Zuber and Duke Shelley to return. And it'll be Shelley stepping out of bounds near the 10-yard line. Clay Maffick, Dan Orlovsky, Paul Carcaterra here in Morgantown. Thompson in trouble, able to get rid of it to Zuber. He catches it at the 15, and then it's taken off his cleats by Akeem Bailey. This defense is moving with lightning speed today. It's one of the things that they teach their guys. Play fast and be in space. Dylan Tongri, their middle linebacker, creating special pressure. And Hakeem Bailey, beautiful job playing in coverage. This might be the most improved defense in the Big 12 this year when it's all said and done. Fake to Barnes, pass complete to Zuber, first down across the 30, down to the 32. Skyler Thompson hand about it. The defensive coordinator for West Virginia. The way to get to this offense is pressure, pressure, pressure on Skyler Thompson, and he's been reminding his defense every time they come off the field. There's Tony, Boone County, West Virginia native, right in the heart of cold country. He is really proud of his group this year. First and 10, Thompson rolling out to his left. He'll dump it off short. And that's caught by Blaze Gammon, the tight end. Just a second career catch. The other main tight end, Nick Lenners, is out today with an injury. And I love those two play calls back-to-back -back by Kansas State because something West Virginia has been a little bit susceptible to, susceptible to is some play-action passes. So I like those back-to-back -back for Kansas State. Second and short, a very powerful Barnes will pick up the first down. Third in the Big 12 in rushing, 76 yards per game. He's going to do most of the heavy lifting today in that K-State run game. But we talked about it before, Dan. You always got to be wary of the quarterback taking off when you play K-State. So we have one touchdown in the first 15 minutes. It's a big strike touchdown from the Heisman hopeful, Will Greer. He finds Marcus Sims on an 82-yard connection. 7-0 Mountaineers after one. We get ready to start the second quarter. It's 7-0, number 12, West Virginia. Leading K-State, Big 12 opener for these two. And these teams get together. These games seem to be close. The last four decided by six points or less. They returned everybody up front. 129 career starts entering play today. That is caught by Zuber at the 43. He has been the best player for this K-State offense here the first few weeks. Gets back close to the original line of scrimmage. He'll be second down at about 12. Really just a beautiful throw by Skyler Thompson because David Long, the weak linebacker for West Virginia, is dropping underneath that. Almost there, but another play-action pass completed for Kansas State. This ruling of a catch is under review. So we're going to look back at that Isaiah Zuber grab. Time out on the field. And we're going to step aside while they peek at it. 14-12 to go here before half. 7-0 West Virginia. Now the play is going to stand Isaiah Zuber. The play ruled a catch. Replay official today, Don Caprell. And this is an offense that at times has struggled. 
Only had 213 yards of total offense a couple of weeks ago against Mississippi State. But Thompson is now 6 of 7, passing 48 yards. And he can run, too. But this time, bottled up and brought down by the West Virginia defense. Josh Norwood, another tackle for the Mountaineers. And it's third down and long. There's a tackle for loss for the West Virginia defense. Norwood doing a nice job of coming off in coverage. And now in third down, Tony Gibson gets to get a little creative with some secondary blitzes. That's their third tackle for loss today for the Mountaineers. They've got 24 of those on the year. These third down situations have been an Achilles heel. Thompson chased out of the pocket, still eyes downfield. He'll throw it away. And the punter for the Wildcats getting a workout today. And it's Tony Gibson, the West Virginia defensive coordinator, dialing it up again. You get into third and long, he's coming with pressure. And he brings a cornerback blitz at the bottom of our screen, off the boundary. Too many people to block for Kansas State up front. Outnumbered. Allows a free rusher to get home. Skylar Thompson nowhere to go with the football. Fourth punt for Hicks. And he drops it at the 21-yard line. The penalty really hurt K-State on that last drive. They trail West Virginia here on the road in Morgantown, 7 0. Play Mavic Dan Orlovsky, Paul Carcaterra here in Morgantown. West Virginia has the football back, and it's Martel Petaway, one of the four running backs that the Mountaineers are going to use this year. The only one we won't see today, Alex Sinkfield, out with a high ankle sprain. Second down and seven. Will Greer, 8 for 12, 154 yards, a touchdown, and an interception thrown for the Heisman hopeful. He'll head off. It's Pelway again. Tries to get to the 30. He stops just short of there. It'll be a couple of yards short of the first down. Third down coming up. But this is why those first and second down positive carries matter, because now you're in the third and three if you're West Virginia. And Will Greer's got four weapons that he can just stand over the defense and say, if you're going to play me in man, which a lot of teams do on third and short, you've got really good options to get the ball to. He's got two receivers to either side. Coming up on 12 minutes to go before halftime. Greer looks to his left, throws. The slap route is complete. Caught at the 40 by Sims. He has been their best receiver today. That's another 10-yard pickup. A.J. Parker made the tackle they'll move the sticks and that's a man beater right there clay inside receiver runs just a vertical the outside receiver comes right underneath him all you need is five or six yards that's why those first and second down carries are important and now here goes Greer and the Mountaineers back on offense deep shot Jennings throws his hands incomplete oh that should have been a touchdown for Gary Jennings Greer knew it is something that good football teams do. You get a turnover, you take a shot. They try to get Dent Jennings down the seam on a post. Beautiful throw again by Greer. Uncharacteristic of Gary Jennings and Will Greer not happy. Not happy with the drop. Greer with one touchdown pass today. Closing in on 200 yards through the air. Draw play. Kennedy McCoy, big run up the middle. First down and more to the 25. Kennedy McCoy, an athletic junior. Touchdowns in each of the first two games for West Virginia. They've got some depth at that position. It's a big emphasis for their team. Again, everyone knows the weapons that Will Greer and his receivers are. But this run game is going to be something that allows this team to really contest for a conference championship. And go back to McCoy. Find some room on the left side. It's going to be close to another first down for McCoy. Last year, Justin Crawford was a 1,000-yard rusher. This year, it's been by committee in the backfield. Knocking out the door in the red zone. And it has been a playground through the first couple of games for Dana Holgerson's squad. 
He admittedly has a Red Bull addiction. <laughs> and they give it to the running back. McCoy again, who streaks free to the pylon. Did he get in? Well, they're going to mark him out. Really on the field. The one yard Runner line. was out of bounds was before the ball broke the plane at the goal line. First down. This West Virginia run game starting to get going. The left side of the offensive line completely collapses Kansas State. They get a couple pullers to get McCoy on the edge. And then big time effort just short of the goal line. Great play by Patton, junior college All-American last year. They've rotated a couple of guys there. That snap went high, but here they get it in. Touchdown Mountaineers, it's David Sills. His third touchdown catch of the year. You know, Clay, sometimes football isn't that hard. It's David Sills is probably picked first at recess a bunch because he's a really good athlete and very tall. It's the same thing. My guy, better than your guy. Easy slant, uses his body, touchdown. Former high school quarterback, Second stint at West Virginia as a wide receiver. As Evan Staley tacks on the extra point, it's a seven-play, 39-yard drive in 231. Took over with great field position after the defensive stand. Took a while to get it in, but they do, and they find their top receiver, David Sills. And they just gave him the whole field to work with from the left hash. He can run a slant if he wants, or he can run a fade to the back corner. Used his nice big body, get a little distance away from that DB. It's too easy to play him. It's too easy for this West Virginia offense if you're going to play them one on one. So, what, what is the future for him? Is it NFL? He certainly has an NFL fu fu uh, future. Very tall, athletic, smart, understands football, great hands. There's always places for guys like that in the NFL. Isaiah Zuber from the four-yard line for K-State. He gets across the 20, takes a shot down at the 22. Let's go. Bill Snyder's got a fast food addiction. Orson's got a Red Bull addiction. So K-State down a couple of touchdowns now. This is Barnes, and he's going to get six. We're talking about wide receivers. David Sills certainly one of the best. And here are your top quarterback wide receiver duos. Tua and Jerry Judy are just on a different level right now, but Kyler Murray stepping in for Baker Mayfield, Hollywood Brown, vertical threat, but Will Greer and David Sills make no bones about it. They belong in the conversation with some of the best in the country. K-State got a couple of touchdowns. Minute 45 to go before half, no timeouts remaining. Thompson on the run, David Long another tackle. Long the junior captain, fifth leading tackler in the Big 12 last year, despite missing four games. He had a knee injury last season, but he's one of the best run stoppers. And for Kansas State, you gotta find a way to get one of your receivers, Dalton Schoen, in the conversation here in third down. Thompson to the outside, incomplete, well covered. Intended for Zuber, but Norwood was all over. Clock stops with a minute and five seconds to go before half, and it's fourth down, and now West Virginia is gonna get the ball back with plenty of time and a couple of timeouts to work with. Kansas State 0 for 6 on third down right now. West Virginia shaking off that rusty start, and this could be a huge back-breaking touchdown before half. Just 77 yards of total offense for K-State. Fair catch called for by Sims. He juggles it, but hangs on at the 27. Something special about Will Greer in the pocket. Just be able to just bounce, stay balanced, and get some completions. Now the shotgun throws to the outside. Find Simmons again. Boy, there is some chemistry developing between those two guys. 40 seconds to go. 
If you're West Virginia, this is the benefit, benefit of having Will Greer. So composed, so mature, can run two-minute drills in his sleep. McCoy in the backfield. Greer looks to the right, throws that way. It's Simmons again. He'll step out at the 42. Only five seconds went off the clock. Evan Staley, their field goal kicker, pretty accurate guy, but they need to get him in a little closer. He missed from 51 earlier here in the half. I promise you, Jake Spavin on Will Greer, they're thinking touchdown. Play action. Pocket collapsing. Got rid of it. There's a nice catch by Jennings. Who dropped a touchdown pass earlier in the quarter. That's a gain of 17. And they'll hurry up to the line. And I talked about it with Will Greer. The combination of anticipation and accuracy. Cutting that ball loose. So early yet still so accurate. Still two timeouts. Going to the end zone. Sales caught at the three. Trying to wrestle his way into the end zone. Kendall Adams made the touchdown saving tackle. 15 seconds to work with. And you're right. It's six on their mind. McCoy lowers his head, and he was really hit hard. Down at the one. Sullivan made the tackle. McCoy is slow to get up. Clock stops. Five seconds to go. Timeout, West Virginia. Six seconds. And now if you're West Virginia, the, the question is, are you going to take a shot at the end zone with the time, or do you take the points right now? Because if you're Kansas State on defense, what you should tell your defenders secondary-wise, you hold. You take the pass interference penalty because the time's coming off the clock. And we're seeing the day that Will Greer is having so far, really building some steam with this offense and all their weapons. But if you're Kansas State on defense in this huddle, you're saying, guys, they do not score a touchdown. You hold, you grab, you tackle. The penalty doesn't matter. Then the clock time comes off the clock. West Virginia's got to make a decision if they're going to kick the field goal or go for a touchdown again. They put one second more back on the clock. So six seconds left. Second down, goal to go. West Virginia has one timeout left. Sills at the top of the screen. He's going to float one that way. Greer. Mon target. What a catch. David Sills. His second touchdown grab. And he just mossed A.J. Parker. Is that what you're saying, Dino? Lost. I mean, what a special talent David Sills is. I love the throw by Greer. I love the call by Jake Spavital. I mean, we're talking about a kid who was a quarterback. Was a quarterback, and now he's one of the best receivers in the country. You nailed it. They were thinking touchdown all the way. And Staley adds the extra point. Seven plays and 73 yards in just 55 seconds. Sills with his second touchdown grab, and it's a thing of beauty. But they've got a 21 to nothing lead at the half. West Virginia will have the football to start the second half as well. And there you see Dana Holgerson, 43 and 6 when leading at the break. Coming up, Adnan, Joey, and Jim with the Lexus halftime report. Dan Orlovsky, Paul Carcaterra, and our crew here at Milan Pushkar Stadium. 21 0. West Virginia, the number 12 team in the country with a comfortable lead as we get ready for the second half. Will Greer, the Heisman hopeful quarterback for the Mountaineers, didn't get out to a great start here today. A interception throw on the first series. They turned it over again on the second series, but West Virginia got it together. He ends up with three touchdown passes in the first half. A big part of that is that maturity that we talked about, and not only from Will Greer, but the whole football team feeling that maturity that he's bringing to this team, and they got hot near the end of the first half. J-State, which did not get across the midfield stripe in the first half, will have the football to start the third quarter. Let's see if the offense can find some life. And bring it out of the end zone. Duke Shelley 
trips across the 20. He's down at the 22-yard line. Will Greer, 19 of 25, 258 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. Two of those touchdown passes were to his good buddy David Sills, who was really good in that first half. They were clicking, no matter what the situation, where the ball was, down seam, finding soft zones, and obviously in the red zone, both those guys are on a different level than so many players in college football right now. And David Sills is another guy, Dan, that you know, has a lot of maturity. Doesn't really care about his numbers. You know, he's very unselfish. The numbers come. But he's also in tune to the other receivers getting their catches. He's trying to help them get plays, too. And as Barnes takes a shot, gets to the 30-yard line. Paul Carcaterra. Yards gained. That was Bill Snyder's response when I asked him what he would like to see from his offense. Down 21 nothing. you would think they would abandon the run game because of how far behind they are, but he wants this offense to stay balanced. He needs to see Skyler in a rhythm. Defensively, he actually thinks they played well. They're tackling well, but the offense is putting them in really tough situations. And just 77 yards total offense. Going to get a first down here from Barnes. They were 0 for 6 on third down in the first half. And the rushing offense, which is such a statement of K-State over the years, 20 yards on the ground. And Bill Snyder's right. This is a veteran offensive line, and they've got to start playing better, and this is an opportunity to show that here in the second half. Skylar Thompson, there's 10 pass attempts. He's going to try and run here, but he's... Hit in the backfield and brought down. There's Giovanni Stewart again. Here's the reality. Giovanni Stewart is just one of the best 11 guys on the West Virginia defense. So you find places for him, the athleticism that allows him to play in between and make a tackle on an athletic quarterback for Kansas State. Linebacking core so thin because of injuries, and they are working around him. Deep shot, Thompson, caught. Isaiah Zuber sat down to make that catch at the 20-yard line. There's another play-action pass for Kansas State. Zuber probably supposed to be running a post to throws his hands up. He sees the safety lead, throws his hand up, letting his quarterback know, I'm going deep, I'm changing my route. Good job by Skylar Thompson seeing him. Play fake, Thompson, oh, that might have been tipped. Could have been picked off, too, by Derek Pitts. There's no foul on the play yep. for defensive pass interference. The ball was tipped prior to the contact. Result of the play is an incomplete pass. It's second down. It's really an RPO, a run pass option. And Skylar Thompson's just reading that boundary corner, sees him blitz. That hesitation right there. He's got to pull that ball, make a decision quicker. That's what allowed that safety to get over the top by Derek Pitts, athletic, being able to blitz, stop, knock the ball away. Second down and goal. K State only two red zone touchdowns this year. Play action, incomplete. Blaze Gammon, the tight end, the intended man, can't make the catch. Third down and goal. Really nice play design. Just a little drawn out fake. Sideline to sideline, horizontal. Get those linebackers to bite up, and Blaze Gammon leaks out. Got to make that catch. In this moment, down 21 nothing. A veteran, you got to make that catch for a young quarterback. Ball at the eight. And he should see man-to-man -man coverage right now. West Virginia's now made a check. What does Skylar Thompson do? Tony Gibson, does he dial up a blitz? Here comes some pressure. Picked up to the end zone. Incomplete. Zach Reuter. The senior out of Columbia, Missouri. Couldn't make the catch in the back of the end zone, and it's fourth down. West Virginia plays his own, and Kansas State not built to come back. Beautiful drive, and then two drop touchdowns. Oh. 
by sure-handed veterans for this offense. Skylar Thompson knows how big those plays are to try to get back in a game against a team that can score at will. Those are the kind of mistakes that have really been haunting the Wildcats this year. Now five for five walk-on kicker Blake Lynch. Bangs it home from 25 yards out. He just earned a scholarship here a few weeks ago for K-State. And the Wildcats are on the board. But a disappointing ending to that drive for Bill Snyder's crew. Absolutely, because they're not built. Kansas State is not built to come back from a big deficit. That touchdown would have been huge to cut it to two. On the return here for West Virginia, it's Marcus Sims. He'll get to the 24. You gotta love Fitz Magic with the swag. And Dan, before the season's over, we're gonna get Clay to have some swag. Huh, we're gonna boy. up his gear game. We're gonna have him go to Italian restaurants with us, take chances, and actually order Italian food and not just a steak. He's a simple <laughs> guy from Minnesota, but around us too, as the year progresses, yeah. some swag for Magic. I'm gonna try to stay undefiled. I am I'm, I am the squarest guy in this booth, that's for sure. <laughs> and then Car Carts is swagged out for a 43-year-old yeah, as you can get. Here's Jennings in motion as they hand off to Martel Petaway right up the middle. And now we'll see, I would think, a lot of that running game for West Virginia guys with you know, the lead and the guys to handle the heavy lifting back there. I expect West Virginia to be who they are. Well, this is a team that's got big time aspirations. A swing pass to Petaway, and he's undercut at the 31 yard line. It'll be third down and short. A.J. Parker has had some good moments. He's had some bad moments. That was a good one. Nice open field tackle for the sub. These are tough plays for defenders because these backs release so fast out to the flats. You've got to be able to drive and fire on a hit. A.J. Parker with a perfect form tackle. Fedaway to the right of Greer. Greer 259 yards passing. On third down, the senior wants to throw. He's complete. There's Sills again, first down. Just short of the 40-yard line. The passing defense for K-State gave up 309 yards for game last year. They've had challenges today. Just the route combination. Sills comes up patient. Which way am I going to go? That stacked receiver set. He comes up and nice and patient. The defender doesn't know when I'm getting man to man. It's a two way go. David Sills, too good. Trips to the boundary. On first down, the fake to Petaway. Greer unloading. Has a man. Tevin Bush caught. Touchdown. Wow. You're right. You called it. They're going to stay true to who they are. And that's letting Greer do what he does best. 62 yards. Just so many weapons. They put trips into the boundary. The offensive line, beautiful protection. And Tevin Bush, the sophomore from New Orleans, down the sideline. Fourth touchdown pass for Greer. Staley with the extra point. Kansas State missed opportunity down on their drive. West Virginia gets the ball back, capitalizes, and their Heisman Trophy candidate quarterback strikes again as West Virginia starts to pile it on on this Kansas State football team. For the 12th time since coming to West Virginia, Will Greer has over 300 yards passing. He's got four touchdowns today. Tevin Bush with that 62-yard touchdown reception moments ago. And as West Virginia is piling on K-State now, Zuber is cut down at the 17-yard line. Will Greer, four touchdowns already trying to chase down Mackenzie Milton for UCF, who had six last night. Spav has so many weapons at his disposal. And Greer finds him.
Justin Silman is going to get his first carry for K-State. West Virginia says the ball came out, and it did. Turnover one the gets their first Fumble. today. Recovered by the defense. Reese Dahlia, the defensive Virginia. end, on the recovery for the Mountaineers. Listen, this is an absolutely explosive West Virginia offense. But this defense made it very clear to us yesterday, Clay, we, we matter too. We're good too. And this is going to be such a, a big part of this team moving forward. And Tony Gibson, there he is, the defensive coordinator. He said, my guys have a chip on their shoulder. We knew this offseason that we were not good last year. In fact, 107th in the country in total defense. And they have been using that to galvanize the unit this year. We can be better. We've got talent to be better. And so far in 2018, they have been. They've just been so athletic. Sideline to sideline shooting gaps that we saw right there by linebacker David Long. And they talked about Tony Gibson, their defense corner, how he really is, how much he cares about him, how tough he coaches them. Dylan Tonkery, the middle linebacker who Tony Gibson called out last week for not making a tackle. He's the one who forced that from him. Now in the red zone, Greer going back to work, intended for Sills. He stumbled. There was some contact, but no penalty flag. A.J. Parker was covering Sills. Reggie Walker lays a pretty good hit on Will Greer in the pocket. A beautiful move. Greer's hung in there. That's a well-thrown football. It just looks like David Sills' feet just get tangled up just as the last second. But I promise you, West Virginia is going to keep going for the jugular here on offense. They're going to run it. Buddy Brown, the freshman, gets it to the 10-yard line. Third down and short. Walker and Adams on the stop. One of the things that you can see is... West Virginia has all these weapons that can spread you out, and as a defense, you have to marry that. And that's the second or third nicely run draw we've seen from West Virginia because the numbers in the box favor them so much. Greer. Sills. Dives. Did he get there? Now they're going to mark him out, but they are talking about it. Same stacked set. Sills comes up super patient, can break either way. Looks like his right foot stepped out of bounds just before he stretches out. But don't worry, we're coming back to you. Three quick strike scoring drives already today. Under a minute 45. This could be another one. Greer. Sills, his third touchdown catch of the day. I cannot say enough about the route running from David Sills. The patience at the line of scrimmage. Step on a bunch of ants and just the suddenness to stick a foot outside and get back inside on the slant. Fifth touchdown catch of the year for Sills. He had 18 of them last year. Staley bangs it on. West Virginia heavy favorites here today, and it's bearing out. The fourth touchdown drive for West Virginia this afternoon. Under two minutes. That one took a minute and eight seconds. They were fired up for this game here today, the Big 12 opener. After that long layoff, the NC State game last weekend, wiped out because of Hurricane Florence. And West Virginia has come to play after a bit of a slow start.
Good run for Skylar Thompson. He gets across the 20 yard line to the 23. And Clay, when we were looking at college football, and the best quarterback receiver doers are the ones doing at the highest level right now, certainly Tua, who's probably doing something really awesome right now in their game. Kyler Murray, Hollywood Brown, CeeDee Lamb, Will Rear, and David Sills having a huge afternoon. And the Big 12 as a whole, as a conference, TCU's got some incredible weapons with Jalen Rager and Kevontae Turpin. Texas has got some big, big time guys, but David Sills and Will Greer are going to make a lot of noise this year. Alex Barnes with a carry of nine yards. You know, some think West Virginia's a college playoff dark horse. I know you're in that camp. Uh, they did lose the NC State game, so that means they're going to have 11 regular season games, 12 if they make the Big 12 title game. And if they do, and they win that, and it would presumably be against Oklahoma or a TCU, perhaps, maybe Oklahoma State, then you got to think that they're in the college football playoff. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's if that's the, the trap that, they're, they, that they go on and they fight and beat in Oklahoma or Oklahoma State, absolutely. Now the Big 12 once considered an outlier for the college football playoff, but you look at it right now, and the league is in pretty good shape. That November, that November is going to be, that's when you're really going to figure out what kind of team you have. At Texas, at OK State with TCU and Oklahoma. Texas, TCU, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma in a four-week stretch. Third down. This has been an Achilles heel for K-State. Thompson will get the first down out to the 40. See Skyler Thompson get knocked out of the field of play. But Dana Holgerson said from a depth a skill, a leadership standpoint. This is as good of a bunch as he's had since he's been at West Virginia. The big challenge now, though, is the Big 12. Because of the offenses, because of those prolific quarterbacks, Dan, that you mentioned, the real test is yet to come. Alex Delton comes in to run the offense for the first time for K-State. And he's a quick runner. And he gets into the secondary and inside the 20-yard line down to the 19. He's the quicker of the two quarterbacks, Thompson and Delton. They had a pretty good battle in camp. They kind of settled on Thompson here, but now maybe the uh, competition's open again. We'll have to see. Yeah, these are always tough, tough situations for a backup to come into. You're getting beat pretty handily, and you're expected, hey, go play after sitting for a couple quarters. But here's an opportunity for Delton. Delton pumps, throws to the end zone, has a receiver, and it's incomplete. Intended for Zuber, and it's out of bounds. Let's go to Adnan Burke. Mm. But Foster's defense having trouble with Old Dominion today as Delton goes to the 15-yard line and then takes a bump. Third turnover forced by K-State, Dan, but they have not scored any points off the turnovers so far today. Uh, it's remarkable. They're, they're plus two right now in the turnover differential. They've gotten three. Kansas State has turned it over once themselves, but losing 35 to three, you're not gonna see that a lot, no matter what level of football you're at. Delton, the Zuber. And he's gonna get the first down inside the 10, and that's gonna be the last play. The third quarter. A couple of touchdowns here in the quarter for West Virginia. Career now has five touchdown passes on the day. All Mountaineers here in Morgantown, 35 to 3, heading to the fourth. Here's Andre Coleman, his offense has struggled to score points today. West Virginia turned it over on its first two possessions of the afternoon, but you can see that they collected themselves behind their Heisman candidate, Will Greer, quarterback. He has thrown five touchdown passes today. Skylar Thompson, the starter for K-State at quarterback, is out right now. Alex Delton, the junior from Hayes, Kansas, is in. To the end zone, incomplete intended for Zuber. Derek Pitts has been busy. And it'll be second down and goal from the 20. Zuber, the sudden receiver, runs a double move. Kind of like a post or a deep sluggo and go. He's got the receiver beat, 
You just love to see Delton drive that ball to the back pylon or throw it up high to the front pylon. Either one, Zuber's able to, gonna, gonna be able to go and make that catch. Incomplete, Barnes left it on the turf. And so now third down and goal. Alex Delton, the quarterback, started four games last year after Jesse Ertz was lost for the year. Then he suffered a concussion and missed the rest of the regular season before coming back to have a really big game in the Cactus Bowl and that win over UCLA. Trying to lead K-State into the end zone for the first time here in Morgantown today. Seventh play of the drive, and you can see third down has been abysmal for the Wildcats. Play action. Delton, good speed. Gets around the corner, but now he's cut off. Out of bounds, fourth down. There's David Long. Darius Stills in pursuit. And they're going to run the field goal kicker, Blake Lynch, out there. It's kind of the story of the game. Not being truly able to capitalize off a turnover. Now we have a field goal attempt, but this is the third turnover from West Virginia that you have been turned into a touchdown if you're the Kansas State offense. This would be a 38-yard attempt for Lynch. He's also kicked from 25 and made it. He's having a good year. Athletic department janitor to help pay for school recently put on scholarship And it's now 35 to 6 Alongside Dan Orlovsky I play Mantic Paul Carcaterra down on the field. It's all West Virginia and It really has been since the early moments of the second quarter 35 to 6 after the second field goal of the day for Blake Lynch K-State kicks off and it's a fair catch will be brought out to the 25. The Greer family in attendance. Will's brother Nash, who's on the left in the yellow shirt, and Hayes are famous through YouTube and Instagram. Both are influencers who connect directly with their audience through the phone, holding a camera in the hand, and looking at the audience in the eyes. These guys are incredible in terms of their original content and the way that they're able to touch people through social media. Look at these followers. Man. 9.9 .9 million for Nash Greer. Look at Will. Yeah, he's 604,000 followers and that's not a bad number, but he's not the most famous person in his family and he could win the Heisman Trophy this year. Well, Clay. Just take heart to the fact that you're only 9,800,999 followers short of Nash, but <laughs> Might be more than that, actually. Look at some of the stars from professional sports that we found their numbers. Uh, Kobe Bryant, Tom Brady, Mike Trout. They all fall short of Nash Greer. Uh, Tom Brady doesn't have as many as Hayes Greer. Mike Trout barely has more than Skyland Group. You know, someone like you, Clay, will ask, why? Well, they exactly. let people into their lives. It's the new reality TV. Every kid has a phone. Every kid can be spoken to, and these guys have mastered that. <laughs> Will's still in there. He's thrown five touchdowns today. He's got another long completion here to Marcus Sims, who does a nice dance to avoid some tacklers, then he gets clotheslined at the 41-yard line. So, Kark, give me an example of something that is on Hayes Greer's Instagram, Twitter, whatever. It, it could be anything. It could be him plucking a cucumber out of the ground. A cucumber. It, could, it could be him jumping off a small cliff into water, but the, the way that they're able to connect with the younger generation, yeah. like I said before, they're speaking to these young people who consume media way different than you, way different than Dan, way different than me. So you're saying I have no shot to get up to his level. It's a carry for McCoy. All right, big family man. We've established that. His wife is Jeannie. He's got an almost two-year-old daughter, Eloise. Just a beautiful young family. See some pictures of Ellie. And Will has 
a mom, Elizabeth. She lives in Charlotte, North Carolina. We talked about Dad Chad. He's in Charleston, South Carolina, high school football coach. So obviously he was very concerned about the path of Hurricane Florence last week. Fortunately, none of the family hurt. No big problems there. But he really is a well-grounded young man. And he grew up around football, in football offices with his dad. We've talked about his family. I'll tell you what, though, when we had the chance to talk to him yesterday, football, 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 I don't know if it was you, Clay, or Kark mentioned his daughter, and his demeanor changed, his speaking changed, and you can tell how important family is to him. You can tell how important his own father is to him. His dad coached him at Davidson Day School in North Carolina. He won a couple of championships. And now he's a head coach at Oceanside Collegiate Academy in South Carolina. And he was down on the sideline earlier today. Talking football with his boy. That's intercepted Jack Allison, the backup to Will Greer. Had it deflected and picked up by Jerron McPherson for K-State. Intercepted. And that is the third interception thrown today by the West Virginia quarterbacks. Zuber again over the middle. And he's down at the 46-yard line. Justin Herbert. He is a tall quarterback, kind of like you. You're, what, 6'5", <laughs> 6'6"? Six, six, six? Yeah, he's a lot better thrower and more <laughs> athletic than I ever was. But Herbert playing at such a phenomenal level for Oregon. Drew Locke actually had a really good day today throwing the football against a good Georgia defense. Jared Stidham, I'm not on the Jared Stidham train like some people are. I don't believe he's played up to the standard, the expectation level. I really look forward to play, watching Ryan Finley play. And we got to see Will Greer today, right? I mean, we got to see Will Greer bring Thanksgiving a little bit early to Morgantown with a full carb session against Kansas State's defense. His second five touchdown pass game of the season, and we're only three games in for West Virginia. He threw five against Tennessee in his hometown of Charlotte. And we're looking at him right now on television. There's a bunch of people around him smiling. And I promise you, those two picks that he threw today, one, mm -hmm. not a bad decision, but those two picks will bother him. Nod him a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I was just very impressed with, in talking with him, his expectation level for himself. Alex Delton is complete to Reuter, who Dropped a touchdown pass earlier in this game, and he gets inside the 35. Football today, Sports Center after the game on ESPN and the ESPN app. It's incomplete. Minute 15 to go here in Morgantown. This has been a fun week getting ready for this game. The fans were excited for it after a no game last weekend. The Florence situation wiped out that game at NC State. So Will Greer. And the West Virginia Mountaineers had a long time to think about this first conference game against K-State. Again, the first two series didn't look so hot, but boy, Will Greer in this offense impressive today. And there's another sack. The defense for West Virginia hasn't been too shabby either. And West Virginia will take on Texas Tech in Lubbock next week. That's going to be a throw it around the grass game. Texas Tech's quarterback Bowman throwing for like 600 yards last week, breaking Patrick Mahomes' Big 12 freshman record. Kansas playing better, too. Oh, they're playing a lot better. Iowa State, good defense, so they'll be tested a little bit over the next couple weeks, but man, that month of November... It's a meat grinder. Mm. Delton over the middle, and that's going to be thrown incomplete. But the conference is anybody's right now. It's anybody's right now. There's no team in the Big 12 that you're going to point to and go, wow, they're so much better than everybody else. I might bring Will Greer out for a curtain call. Yep, here he comes. What a day for him. Will Greer, five touchdown passes today, 356 yards through the air. Now has 14 touchdown strikes in three games. West Virginia, 3-0.
and a college football playoff dark horse. What a treat to come to Morgantown today. Watch not only the West Virginia defense play at a high level, but get to see one of America's best quarterbacks and receiving groups play. Highlighted by Will Greer and David Sills. Let's go down to Paul, who's with Will Greer. Five touchdowns. What allowed you to be so successful through the air tonight? Uh, got a lot of things to clean up. Um, you know, the O-line did a really good job today. I'm really proud of that group and, and what they were able to uh, able to do today. Uh, they've come a long way and uh, continue to work hard and, and prove that they're a really strong group. Um, a lot of things still to work on in the passing game. I thought we, you know, we got lazy with some stuff. We need to execute better. Um, you know, we, we, we did some things well, obviously, but we, that wasn't a clean game. So we, we expect to play a better game next week. Always looking for perfection, but you're ability to connect with David Sills three touchdowns for him tonight why is that combination so successful he, he's he's lethal in the red zone man he knows how to position himself to get open and, and he, he makes tough catches in the red zone and uh, you know I trust him to come down with it I just put it near him down there and he makes big time plays for you you're a quarterback but you're a dad as well during home games in Morgantown what's the first thing you do with your daughter Ellie when you see her she doesn't come to the game, so when I get home, she runs to me, and now when she hugs me, she pats me. That's her thing now, so I, I, I'm looking forward to that. I love doing that every week. Embrace those pats. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Country Roads plays in the background. It's another win for West Virginia. They're 3-0. They've got a Heisman contender in Will Greer. Coming up next on ESPN, college football scoreboard with Adman, Joey, and Jim. For Paul Carcaterra, Dan Orlovsky, I'm Clay Mantic. We say so long from Morgantown.